Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from Yogyakarta. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Ethiopia, Djibouti, and African Union, His Excellency Mr. Al Bushro Basnur. Thank you very much for your come. The ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Somalia, UNEP, and UN Habitat in Nairobi, His Excellencies Dr. Muhammad Heri Saribudin. Thank you. Your Excellency Pro Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the University of Namibia, Professor Fred Nat Gideon, thank you very much. The Honorable Vice Director for Research and Community Services, Universitas Gajah Mada, Coordinator or Chair of Indo Africa Center, Universitas Gajah Mada, and all of distinguished speakers, moderator, and all of participants today. We wish you a good afternoon from Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. And today, we have a great honor of welcoming all participants to web-based international seminar Africa-Indonesia Threat Reaction, Current Status, Strategic Issues, and Future Trajectories. Ladies and gentlemen, in early 2021, Indonesia, through the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Pretoria, reached a cooperation agreement with the Implementing Agency of the African Union Development Agency, New Partnership for Africa's Development, to accelerate the development of its country members, such as the Republic of South Africa, the Republic of Botswana, the Kingdom of Eswatini, and the Kingdom of Lesotho, which are the accredited countries of the Indonesian Embassy in Pretoria and members of African Union. The agreement emphasizes its ongoing priority agenda, namely capacity building for human resources, economic integration, and regional industrialization. In such situation, is it interesting to discuss further how Indonesia and African countries are getting ready to implement future trade arrangements and opportunities in addition to several agreements that are already implemented. The following topics for today's seminar are about current status and state of play of key trade technical matters and institutional aspect, strategic issues in further deepening Africa-Indonesia trade relation and future trajectories of Africa-Indonesia trade relation to discuss opportunities to development preferential trade agreement. This web-based seminar was made possible because of incredible partnership between Indonesia Africa Center as a form of cooperation between Universitas Gajah Mada and University of Namibia and also with a Center for World Trade Studies Universitas Gajah Mada. Ladies and gentlemen, let us start today's agenda by listening to the national anthem of Indonesia.
National Anthem of Namibia. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, in this afternoon webinar session, we also provide interpretation facilities from English to French. We will inform all of the instructions in the chat box in the next session. Ladies and gentlemen, next we'd like to invite Vice Rector for Research and Community Services, Universitas Gajah Mada, to deliver a welcoming remarks. Dr. Ika Dewi Ana PSD, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon. The Honorable Professor Fred Nard Gideon, Provice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the University of Namibia. The Honorable Dr. Taryono, Coordinator for Indo-Africa Center, Universitas Gajah Mada. The Honorable Dr. Riza Nur Arfani, Director or Chairholder of the WTO Chairs Program, Center for World Trade Studies, Universitas Gajah Mada, the Honorable Ambassador Bapak Al Bushra Basnur, Ambassador of the Republic Indonesia for Ethiopia, Djibouti, and African Union, the Honorable Professor Dr. Azedin Gouvran, Dean and Chairholder of WTO Chairs Program at the Faculty of Law, Economics and Social Sciences, the Mohammed University of Rabat, Morocco, the Honorable Dr. Muhammad Heri Saripudin, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Somalia, UNEP, and UN Habitat in Nairobi, distinguished presenters and discussant, distinguished guests. I'm very pleased to welcome you to the international webinar of Africa-Indonesia Trade Relations, Current Status, Strategic Issues, and Future Trajectories. Indonesia's expansion into non-traditional African markets, especially in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, is considered appropriate and holds potential benefits for both parties. For Indonesia, this activity can stimulate national export growth that contributes to overall economic recovery, as well as for each trading region country in Africa, which is considered capable of improving state welfare, which includes GDP growth, employment growth, and reducing the African trade deficit, as well as increasing intra-African trade through the elimination of import duties and non-tariff barriers. This enthusiasm is certainly important, but on the other hand, it is also appropriate to oversee its development and implementation. The following three pillars can serve as indicators, including the threat element, 
how trade regimes, non-tariff barriers, suppression of production costs, development of production technology, capacity of natural and human resources to the strength of the trade supervisory institutions are able to encourage regional and global market fulfillment. The investment elements, how tax incentive and infrastructure lease subsidize can attract investors. And three, the labor elements, how the mobility and social security packages of workers are regulated and monitored in addition to the ease of production and prior investment. In the future, Indonesia and Africa can expand their trade relations by engaging other African countries to sign preferential trade agreements. The rise of investment and debts from China to some African countries can be seen as a chance for Indonesia to increase trade with several African countries. This webinar is also a part of the webinar series of the Indonesia African Centers, which is the embryo for the Indonesia Africa Universities Network that we will work together for education, research, and community services. I hope this webinar can give us a new insight in order to build better cooperation in education, research, community services, and other developments between Indonesia and Africa in the area of trade relations. Thank you very much and have a fruitful discussion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Vice Rector for Research and Community Services, Universitas Gajah Mada, for the welcoming remarks. And next, we would like to invite Dr. Chandra Wahyu Puromo on behalf of Professor Taryono as the coordinator of Indo Africa Center for Sustainable Development, Universitas Gajah Mada, to deliver a remarks. Dr. Chandra Wahyu Puromo, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um. Honorable Ambassador of Indonesia for Ethiopia, Chipoti, African Union, Honorable Ambassador of Indonesia for Kenya, and all the uh, staffs, uh, distinguished guests, professors, Gideon, uh, lectures, honorable speakers, and all my colleagues, also participants. Uh, allow me to give a short talk uh, to open this uh, webinar of Indonesia Africa Center. I think this is the third webinar that have been organized by the center. This time, we have a topic of Africa-Indonesia trade relation, current status, strategic issues, and uh, future trajectories. Thank you for all of your contribution to make this webinar series happen. Hopefully, we can sustain this relationship and also moving to the next stage of implementation and real application, not only ended by uh, online meetings. Uh, sorry, Pak Taryono, as the coordinator of the center, has uh, another really, really important meeting. So he says sorry to all of you that he cannot join this meeting and send you all the warm uh, regards. Yeah. Actually, I am an engineer, yeah, not a trade expert, but I am a big fan of YouTube documentary about Africa. Uh, one issue that concerning me is about asymmetric trade condition in Africa. For instance, uh, I saw cocoa trade, uh, all based cocoa goes to Europe, Europe while leaving Africa with deforestation, illegal uh, child labors, and also uh, environmental, environmental damage. Yeah? Also in other documentaries covering a product of instant powder milk yeah, from Europe flooding Africa with very cheap price, yeah, and then uh, threatening the local production of milk there. Yeah. And many other issues uh, such as excessive illegal fishing, mineral oil extraction by foreign company and so on. I think the condition is uh, quite similar happen in Indonesia. So we have to hand in hand to make the condition better, better for our people and all the world population. So hopefully this webinar can trigger a more just and sustainable trade in the future between Indonesia and Africa and also all over the world. Thank you and let's have a wonderful discussion. Uh, good afternoon. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Chandra Wahyu Purnomo, for the welcoming remarks. And next, we'd like also to invite the representative from University of Namibia to deliver our remarks. The opening remarks will be delivered by Pro Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs of University of Namibia. We would like to invite Professor Fred Nad. Of ceremony. Uh, good morning to everyone. His Excellency Ambassador Al Busula Basun, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Ethiopia. His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Henry Salipuddin, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Kenyans and other countries. Professor Ika Dewi Anna, Director of Research and Community Engagement at Gajamaja, and also the head of the uh, in Indonesia Africa Center. Colleagues and all participants, ladies and gentlemen, let me also recognize Professor Triano in absentia. Good morning and good afternoon. It's actually um, about nine, nine o'clock here in Namibia. I can imagine it, it should be after the afternoon in, in Indonesia. So let me take this opportunity and thank my counterparts or my colleagues from Indonesia side for the continued support in this program or this initiative, Indonesia Africa Center, which obviously playing a very critical role to enhance a relationship between our two key countries. Today, we have another webinar titled Africa-Indonesia Trade Relations, Current Status, Strategic Issues, and Future Trajectories. This webinar follow a series of other webinars that have taken place in the past months. Very successful webinars. This is a demonstration of a growing commitment and relationship between the two institutions. And the University of Namibia is very strongly committed and it will continue to participate and play its key role in this strategic initiative. We are looking forward to the next implementations of this strategic partnership. I can see today we have, you know, key speakers, our ambassadors from key countries like Kenya and Ethiopia delivering very key, you know, um, talks actually as a, as a contribution to our, our theme or our topic for this webinar this morning. <clears throat> as we are closing off the year, we would like to indicate to our partners that the University of Namibia is working very hard to strengthen the relationship and also to strengthen the structure to support this program. This is one milestone we would like to, to, to embark upon in the new year, so that at least we can actually provide a smooth functioning to the activities. And we are also looking forward to a wider network. I think that is one of the key achievements that we should be able to strive for in the, in the, new, in, in the, in, in the new year. So, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the, um, or to wish all the presenters in this webinar a very wonderful presentations, and also extend the warm greetings from our vice chancellors to all the participants. As we are drawing very close to the end of the year, I would like to wish each and everyone a happy new year but also a safe festive season now that we are facing another wave. With those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to this webinar and wish you a very successful you know, um, webinar day ahead. I thank you. Thank you, Professor Gideon, for the welcoming remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the agenda continued with the plenary discussion. On today's webinar, we will have two panel discussion. The first panel discussion, we will have two speakers here. First, 
We have here Dr. Jacob Yambe, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Commerce, Management and Law, University of Namibia. Dr. Jacob will explain us about the key technical matters and institutional aspect of Africa-Indonesia trade relation. The second speaker, we have here the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Ethiopia, Djibouti, and African Union, His Excellency, Mr. Al Bushra Basnur. Mr. Ambassador will deliver a topic about the strategic issue in developing Africa-Indonesia trade relation, a case of Indonesia-Ethiopia Business Connect. In the second panel discussion, we will also have two speakers. First, Professor Dr. Azedin Gufran, the Dean and Chairholder of WTO Chairs Program at the Faculty of Law, Economics and Social Science, the Mohammed V University of Rabat, Morocco. Professor Azedin, will explain us about prospect of Africa-Indonesia trade relation, a Morocco-North African perspective. The second speaker in the second panel discussion, we will have the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Somalia, UNEP and UN Habitat in Nairobi, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Heri Saribuddin. Mr. Ambassador will explain us about prospect of Africa-Indonesia trade relation, an Indonesian perspective. Let us start the first session with all of the speakers. The first panel discussion will be chaired by a moderator. She is a lecturer in the Department of International Relations, Universitas Gajah Mada. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our moderator, Miss Siti Daula Khoriati Emma. Oh, do not forget to fill in the attendance list on the link sent by a committee in the chat box. You can check it in the chat box, yeah? So, uh, Siti, the time is yours to chair this first plenary discussion. Thank you, Mas Aditya. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and all the participants to this web international seminar. We will start with the first session in this afternoon with two speakers. Uh, the first is Dr. Jakob Nyambe. Uh, I haven't seen he is joined this uh, Zoom. Is Dr. Nyambe already here? Um, Udaula. Yes. It seems uh, he has um, technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. So um, probably we may start with uh, Ambassador Al Bushara Asnur. Okay, thank you, yeah. Pariza. Uh, so, uh, participants, uh, we will start first with His Excellency Ambassador Al Bushara Asnur. Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Ethiopia, Djibouti, and African Union. And later on, after Dr. Jakob Nyambe joined us in this Zoom meeting, we will proceed with his presentation. So first of all, please, uh, time is yours for His Excellency Ambassador al Kusra Pasnur. You will have 15 minutes, sir, for this presentation. All right. Uh Thank you very much, Ibu Daula, uh, uh, for uh, this uh, very uh, important and, uh, you know, uh, kind of introduction. And I'd like to uh, say hello to greet my uh, good new friend, Ibu Dr. Ika Dewi Anna, and also my good friend, uh, Pak Chandra, and my good friend also, Dr. Riza Nur Arfani. Uh, and also, my uh, dear excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends, and of course, uh, we have a lot of uh, students, I believe, uh, who uh, you know that particip uh, are particip participating in this uh, very uh, uh, urgent and important uh, webinar we have. And uh, first of all, uh, Thank you very much for our colleagues and friends at the uh, University of Gajah Mada, especially our friend in Indonesia Africa Center for inviting me to join with this session uh, to talk and discuss about Indonesia, Africa, particularly Ethiopia, where I am now in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. I like to use my, you know, presentation, PTT. PPT, sorry, and let's see for the let's see for the second uh, slide, right? Okay. My dear friends, I like to start with you know what are the priorities of Indonesia's 
for its policy in 2019 up to 2024. Number one, I like to put an underline there, the strengthening economic diplomacy. So this is really in line with our topic today uh, about the economy uh, issue. And also the citizen protection, defending leadership. Recording and next, progress. if we look into the two, 2021, next. Uh, economic diplomacy, the economy issue is also one of the Indonesian priority in diplomacy in 2021. Number two, saying that supporting economic recovery and green sustainable development. So I have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, slides, but I tried to, you know, jump one by one uh, quickly. Next. Well, in January 9th, 2020, the President of the Republic of Indonesia directed already the, all the head of mission in Indonesia the ambassadors, consul generals, consuls, that the head of Indonesian representative have to focus on the task of economic diplomacy to build the nation economy, namely carrying out the constitutional mandate as an ambassador of peace in the politic, ambassador of investment and Indonesian export in economy, and ambassador of innovation in social and culture. So the presidents of Indonesia, Bapak Joko Widodo, clearly, you know, uh, delivered the instructions, bold instructions, uh, instructions to the head of mission offices, including the ambassadors. Next, all right. Now I like to draw your attention about the distance geographically you know locations of indonesia and africa everybody knows that but i believe some of them some of us some of you do not know that the distance between jakarta to addis ababa it is more than eight thousand kilometers right so this is ethiopia Djibouti, and african union that the uh, where uh, i am uh, signing by the government. Next. Well, Africa. I believe, and based on my two and a half years working here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, more than 90%, 90%, more than 90% of people in Indonesia still lacking of the current situation, the updated versions of what is what africa it is now the situation especially in the economy right so africa consisting in 55 countries so there are uh, they have the uh, regional uh, organization so-called african union and the population is 1.3 billion more or less total gdp 2.6 trillion africa continent is very huge continents it has a three time zones, east, center, and west. And also, in each region in Africa continent, they have their own regional organizations, mainly focused on the economic corporations. I'm sorry, we have, uh, Ambassador. Yes. The slide is seems not moving. Oh, all right. Uh, first, okay. Uh, page, page, yeah. Here in the face. Okay. Can you? Mm -hmm. My, I, I'll, I'll ask my, my, my uh, team to uh, work on it, but I think, let's see. I'm sorry about that, my dear friends, uh, the participants. Bisa. Bisa dimi lagi? Yeah. Uh, what, what? Yes. Is, is it moving yes. now, my dear friends? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So now we are in Africa, right? In the map of Africa. Is that correct? You got it? Perfect, yes. um, Ambassador. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. So now next. Next. Okay. This is the African Union headquarters located in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. 
this uh, headquarter is not far from my you know my office where i am now it is only about the one and a half kilometers away from the embassy of indonesia right all right this is the uh, headquarters of the 55 member countries of the african union in addis ababa next and here in addis ababa also you know uh, the the office located the office of the united nation economic commissions for africa next all right so uh, i'd like to uh, just to bring your attention i believe that my colleagues my colleagues in africa know this very well but my colleague in indonesia i'd like to just to remind you because starting from the first of january this year the the uh, african uh, continental free trade area already you know implemented effectively what is that the african continental uh, continental free trade area uh, aims to want to encourage trade and investment between african countries intra africa right and then the second to encourage the elimination of export import taxes between african countries and encouraging the accelerations of infrastructure development to support africa agriculture together with the infrastructure development for africa and finally helping productivity and product market access and innovation african agriculture conducted with the new partnership the africa's development right next well now the uh, african continental free trade area already ratified by 54 uh, countries uh, except one eritrea still waiting next all right my dear friend the relations between indonesia and africa started for a long time already uh, historically we know that uh, in 1955 it was on the 8th of april up to uh, uh, 24 of april i repeat 8 to 24 april 1955 indonesia hosted indonesia africa conference held in bandung participated by 29 countries and six of them are uh, from where from africa and 2005 we organized the commemoration the summit of asean and african and also 2015 we also organized the you know the commemorations of the you know the conference and 2018 we organized indonesia africa forum focus on economy followed by 2018 with indonesia africa maritime uh, you know uh, uh, dialogue and 2019 it was in august we organized indonesia africa infrastructure dialogue focus on economy around 822 million us dollar uh, we signed a contract with, uh, during the event the, the dialogue next all right indonesian companies investing in african continent there are about uh, more than 30 companies indonesian companies investing in and in african continent and the vast majority of indonesian companies investing in uh, nigeria around 15 companies and in africa uh, in, in ethiopia there are about five with the five indonesian companies investing in ethiopia it put ethiopia as the second uh, largest you know country hosting indonesian companies next all right so now uh, what are the companies uh, indonesian companies are now investing in uh, uh, ethiopia uh, first uh, indofood i probably know that that is indomie yeah? indomie uh, instant noodle and the second one is that uh the soap b29 and also garment uh century garment uh, sumiri and also also golden sierra abyssinia so five indonesian companies in now are now investing in ethiopia next all right ethiopia now is very much different comparing to ethiopia when it was in 20 or 30 years ago we know that ethiopia in 1984 86 you know uh they experience a famine uh, a lot of very lives very difficult and 1.2 million peoples pass away 
during that time because of the uh, the, the famine during that time. But now Ethiopia, especially Addis Ababa, changed a lot. Ethiopia is one of the uh, fastest growing economy in the region. 2007 and 2017, the uh, economic growth in Ethiopia uh, in average above 10 percent. Now the economic growth of Ethiopia around 4.5 up to 5 percent. Next, Ethiopia. This is Ethiopia, landlocked country. <laughs> it has no seas, uh, but they have a lot of lakes. The population about 115, but lately uh, I got information 119. The second biggest population in uh, country uh, in, in Africa after Nigeria with 2006 uh, million people. And if I come down to the uh, uh, Ethiopia is the top uh, five countries for foreign direct investment, and uh, as we call it uh, the diplomatic capital of uh, you know uh, in Africa and 86% of Nile River uh, coming from uh, Ethiopia, right? So uh, uh, coffee, we know the coffee origins. So I have to uh, catch up uh, with us. Next. All right, this is the trade balance between Indonesia and Ethiopia. Not, not very much, but uh, the numbers always growing up uh, step by step every year, especially before the pandemic. 64 million, uh, you know, uh, US dollar. Next. What are the products very famous and popular here in Ethiopia? Here, even the Avanza car, uh, also uh, you know uh, imported uh, from Indonesia here in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia. Next, this is the Indonesia Ethiopia top export product. Indonesian top export to Ethiopia is uh, palm oil, soap, paper, uh, electric, uh, you know, uh, gadget devices, uh, synthetic rope. Uh, what do I say? Uh, paper and so on, so on. And what from Indonesia? Indonesia top import from Ethiopia. That is about the uh, you know peanut, uh, cotton, flowers, uh, goat skin, black cumin, peas, lamb skin, coffee. Right. Next. All right. So this is the the opportunity for Indonesia to increase the economic cooperation with Ethiopia because we know that Indonesia has the very uh, you know the uh, great potential in food beverage textile blah 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 you can see that they can read it uh, down uh, scroll down and the other the right side is that the, that is the strategic uh, you know the sectors ethiopia would like to develop about energy pharmaceutical uh, agro uh, processing and so on and so on for your information 80 percent of the pharmaceutical products in ethiopia now imported so this is a very good uh, you know opportunity for indonesian businessmen to import to uh, Ethiopia. Next. Next. All right. So we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, activities here uh, to promote the Indonesia and Ethiopia uh, uh, economic cooperations, uh, not only about the exhibitions, but also the business matching and so on. So on. next, I just want to catch up uh, uh, the, 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 okay. And also, uh, you know, uh, my dear friends, the knowledge between Indonesian businessmen and Ethiopian businessmen about their own potential to establish the cooperation and to increase the, the cooperation in the economy still, still, you know, in the past is still lacking. Still, they need more information to each other about the products, about the how to do uh, business between the two countries and so on and so on. But this is, uh, you know, uh, in the last uh, two and a half years that I've been here, I try to encourage the all sectors. I'm not only working in the capital of Addis Ababa to meet with the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, the businessmen, but also I came to visit uh, a lot of businessmen in the region, in the small city and so on and so on. And the result was really positive. Next. So we have a lot of programs. Next, like this one, we have a lot of programs also, get in touch with so many as, as possible. And uh, every uh, program we have at the embassy, we, also, we always put it on the economic element promotions, right? Okay, next. This is some of, there are a lot of uh, programs that we have here, uh, with, uh, you know, we always uh, put the additional content on the economic cooperation. Next. This is the, great opportunity for Indonesia to work with Ethiopian businessmen. One is that uh, 
uh, water uh, higher chain uh, utilization training because the higher chain here they don't know people here in Ethiopia they don't know what to do with the higher chain. Uh, kalau kita in Indonesia itu eceng gondok ya eceng gondok higher chain. So we don't know in Indonesia we use higher chain for the very you know a lot of product we can make it from higher chain like uh, you know uh, home industry yeah for the home industry and tempe uh, right uh, soy beans. Uh, training course. They don't. They don't know Tempe here in in, in in Ethiopia. So I'm going to. I'm planning to uh, uh, organize the training. Uh, you know uh, what you call it to train the Ethiopian people how to make Tempe because Ethiopia produce a lot of Tempe soya beans. There are a lot and about a scholarship and bamboo utilization and uh, cultivation training course and also jewelry training course. There are a lot of opportunity we have now. Next. The challenge of Indonesia export to uh, export product in Ethiopia is that about the because we have a similarities in products, right? And also because lack of an unavailability of foreign currency. Why Ethiopia now is experiencing the uh, uh, the lack of the you know the uh, foreign currency because they uh, they have the massive development of physical infrastructure in African countries and also minus trade balance due to a bigger import than export and also uh, people purchasing power uh, as you know that uh, uh, Ethiopia is one of the least developed countries in, 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 in Africa and also about the politics, economy, social and security there is some areas especially north in the north as of now uh, the, the, this country has a problem next and of course there is always the way to uh, you know to increase the the, the 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 economic cooperation between indonesia and ethiopia by doing more of promotion better and uh, stronger and uh, product consistency this is a common uh, problem actually not only here in the, in, in the ethiopia uh, not only in africa but also in other countries uh, about the product consistency and competition and cooperation and living in present africa Africa is very, as I said earlier, that with the population of 1.3 billion people, this is a very, you know, the great opportunity for Indonesia to come in with all kind of the, you know, products and uh, uh, economic scheme of uh, the cooperation. Next, well, I have another two, uh, you know, uh, slides. Many questions actually when I arrive here. Many questions erased and they addressed to me. Among others, what are the Indonesian products that have a strong potential to be exported here and vice versa? They don't know. Many of them, they are still do not know about this. Could you please give me the contact number of business in Indonesia? Well, I have a product. How can I market it in, uh, to Indonesia or Ethiopia? So, the last question often addressed to me is that, uh, was that, can embassy sell my products in Ethiopia or in Indonesia? And now, next, considering and knowing that still many Ethiopian businessmen and also Indonesian businessmen do not know each other better about the potential and how to do business, how to connect each other. So in October 2019, we established, we launched Indonesia Ethiopia Business Connect. That is the application, WhatsApp application, connecting Indonesian businessmen and Ethiopian businessmen through the WhatsApp application, so they can they can they can communicate uh, easily, uh, instantly, and uh, you know uh, uh, they can exchange everything uh, information they, they they have. Next, so why Indonesia Ethiopia Business Connect we establish this to develop the business communication between the business people from Indonesia and Ethiopia faster and real time and to provide a complete information about the products visual and non-visual to identify the challenges and solutions on the business matter of both countries to exchange information thoroughly in product supplies and demand and of course in that platform in that communication embassy will easily monitoring the bilateral business activities and progress and maybe they need indonesian embassy's hands help uh, for the, the the business in their business next and this is my book uh, this is only about uh, uh ethiopia this indonesian edition but that is also english edition already i also mentioned about economic potential uh in uh, ethiopia and indonesia 
and uh, uh, I also explain about uh, how to do business, how the you know how big the potential between our two countries, Indonesia and Ethiopia, in economic cooperation. Next, I think that's all. Uh, Ibu Daula, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ushra, for the very interesting presentation and. Maybe many of us uh, feel surprised yeah, that Ethiopia is a very modern uh, country now. Yeah, looking at the pictures presented by the ambassador that uh, Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, is like another modern city in the world. So maybe many of us never imagined that. And we're still waiting for uh, Dr. No. Nyambe is already yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, before uh, continuing to uh, question and answer, I would like to invite Dr. Jacob Nyambe, uh, who will present his uh, paper on strategic issues in developing Africa-Indonesia trade relations, a case, uh, sorry, uh, the key technical matters and institutional aspects of Africa-Indonesia trade relations. So, Dr. Nyambe, time is yours uh, for 15 minutes. Director of Ceremonies, uh, please allow me to indicate that uh, our, my, the, the paper that I'm going to present has changed. It changed because um, I think the communication that we shared was not shared with you. Um, we resorted to a paper, a journal paper that is to be published, but it's not yet. Uh, so I will introduce it just now. Uh, when I switch off my video, uh, it's more into uh, trade openness and, I mean, trade openness, exchange rate, and uh, global oil price. I'll just project it very briefly. Uh, allow me to do that now. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I hope you can hear me. First of all, allow me to stand on the established protocol um, and also allow me at the same time to recognize some prominent persons who are in the dignitaries uh, through the director ceremonies. Um, as I indicated that we opted for a paper, which is the impact of global oil prices and exchange rates on trade openness in Namibia. Uh, co-integration approach that is presented by, or let me say it's authored by me and um, uh, Mr. Unji, who also works in the Department of Economics at the University of Namibia. The outline of the study is one background, objectives, methodology, empirical findings and conclusion. Um, I want to cover what you see on the screen by sharing with you briefly on Namibia. Um, Namibia got its independence in, I think, 31 years ago. It's a small country with a population of uh, not more than 2.5 million. It has modern roads, uh, modern financial system. We have what is called um, uh, the stock ex exchange in this country that is linked to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in South Africa and then to the London Stock Exchange. Um, I'm sorry, Dr. Nyambe. Yes. Are you Can sharing you... your screen? You can't. Oh, you can oh, see we it. cannot. Yeah, we cannot see it. I tried to do so. Okay. Yeah, Let yeah. Me, Please. Let me try again. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of some failure somewhere. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, we can now see it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. You're welcome. So I said um, I'm just trying to catch up with time quickly, but just highlight a few things that are not on the screen. Um, oh, of course, Namibia has a steady economic growth besides what COVID did, um, especially in 2020 to now, where the economy shrank by uh, negative 8%. It's a net importer of oil. It's engaged in exploring oil uh, at sea and on land. Its currency is pegged to the South African rent. That is on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, uh, maybe because you didn't see the beginning, this is what I wanted to show you, that this, this paper is written by me and uh, on the other side, my colleague, Mr. Unji. 
Okay. As the world is recovering from COVID-19, of course, we see now another emergency with uh, other variants. We started with the Delta. That was more serious. And now there's a new one, uh, Omicron. Um, but looking at the World Trade Organization, uh, world mechanisms fell in terms of trade from 0.2% in 2019 to negative 53 in 2020. That is mainly because of COVID-19. Uh, while there are global dynamics as well that are taking place, resulting from COVID, which are more exogenous factors, there's also an aspect of global oil prices changing. So there's some kind of volatility in such, also impacting on a number of issues, exchange rate issues, and so forth. For Namibia, uh, the trend in trade openness that we looked at starts from 1990 to 2019. And... Uh, it shows how openness has varied over the years, as well as the global oil price. This is just a trend. It's not necessarily much to be worried about, as well as the GDP, how it fluctuated over the years. It remained almost low, but there will be some significant growth somewhere recorded, especially in uh, the trend that you can see somewhere here. Okay. Um, but it's not very clear as to how Namibia will weather the storm with regards to changing global prices. We thought that we should investigate that aspect. But before that, I want to share with you uh, using the IGI definition of trade openness. It refers to the orientation of the country's economy in the context of international trade. That is the degree of openness, which is measured by the actual size of registered imports and exports of the economy. Um, there are studies that have been done in the areas of trade openness and so forth. Um, in this case, there's one study that I want to highlight, the one by Bala Chin and Majama in 2019, who investigated how change in oil prices affected Nigeria's trade openness. Their study found that when oil prices um, picked up, there was an effect on trade openness. Um, but the, the opposite would be insignificant. In terms of the objectives of this study, as I indicated, is to look at the global oil price. That is to assess the impact of the global oil price on exchange, that is um, exchange rate. In fact, to look at the two, global oil price and exchange rate, on trade openness. In other words, trade openness is the dependent variable. Specific objectives to examine the long run and short run impacts of global oil price and actions rate that is on trade openness. And then to assess whether there are any long run and short run causal impacts running from the external variable of interest to trade openness. It's a quantitative study as it sounds already. Um, we are looking at the time series data from 1990 to 2019 obtained from Namibia Stock, uh, Namibia Statistical Agency, Bank of Namibia and uh, the British Petroleum, that is BP. We looked at seven variables, one trade openness, which is measured in the form of a percentage, crude oil price, that's the US dollar, and then the exchange rate, Namibian dollar to the US dollar, real GDP growth percentage, government expenditure, and then that's Namibian dollars, and then the debt stock, which is public debt, and inflation, in, which is a percentage. The methods that we use for analysis, it's an econometric model um, that, of course, the first one is simply a straightforward OLS, or uh, ordinary least squares, um, as a regression model. And then we then transform that into an autoregressive uh, distributed leg model, which is an ARDL. Um, of course, the functional model is that. Then we came to the, oh, I mean, AR, ARDL, which is uh, the reduced version for long run. And um, we have our open uh, thread openness, as my case, uh, thread openness is a, like I indicated, this dependent variable um, with the, where is the Kesa? Kesa is, is getting stuck instead of 
I wanted to highlight here. Okay, um, the normal constant, those are parameters, all those as we go on, uh, then we, we then have summation of the openness on, in this area, we also have what we call the, that functional relationship that comes from there, which takes all the independent variables of the, how you, I mean, the way you call, call it, the right hand side of the equation, placing that again in the form of a summation plus your disturbance term at the end. That is for, for a long run. Then for a short run vision, uh, is the same again openness, but of course, we consider the change element that goes together again, same component because it has to be, it has to be tested on, on it itself as a component, but with a leg of one going the same way until the end. Our results uh, that we found from a long run perspective is that um, with oil, it was considered to be statistically insignificant, considering the aspect of um, its T value, that is less than two, uh, as well as its P value that is not less than 0 0.05, so that is out. What became significant in this case, if you look at the model, is this variable. This variable is what what I indicated earlier is dead stock. That is what, what comes out here. Dead stock was found to be much significant compared to all other variables when we look at the, at the long run, so long run uh, relationship. Others were statistically insignificant, especially um, when we look again at the T values. They are all less than two here. They should, be, they should reach two. The p-value should be less than 0 0.05, so it's only one. On the short run side, again, uh, the relationship that we found is that openness is more significant. And um, again, the key one, key one is the same dead stock, but exchange rate, not exchange rate, I mean, global oil price is also somewhat significant. Um, from the, not much, let me put it like that, um, because the problem is that its T-value is again less than two. And then when we move to um, the error term, I mean the error correction term, uh, in that case, we were able to get a significant relationship, uh, both in terms of the T-value and the P-value. Okay, so that was established as being quite significant, as well as the F-test, which measures the overall suitability of the model to the data. Of course, our diagnostic tests, they all complied with regards to uh, heterogeneity, uh, normality aspect, including the Ramsey test. So there we are satisfied. Uh, I think uh, what I have now to focus on is just to try and explain what this means, um, such compliance, compliance as well as the policy results that are coming out of such kind of uh, reflection, which is what I will share with you briefly. Um, we found that, yes, the variables um, are of interest. Um, in this case, we found that uh, government intervention needs to come on board, but so far, the same government intervention through the National Energy Fund has helped weather the storm in terms of uh, uh, oil prices, but they are in, in terms of their impact in the Namibian context. This is because there is a subsidy that government provides uh, to local businesses as well as uh, to the consumers in Namibia as a way of cushioning them against the harshness of the global uh, prices that are quite volatile. Um, then the other issue is that, uh, from a policy perspective, uh, we found that global oil prices, um, in the context of the Namibian perspective, have impacted just mildly. Um, the reason is that, as I indicated, what happens at home from the domestic policy perspectives 
uh, it appears that it takes very long to arrive at the implications that one would get from volatility in oil prices. As such, it's recommended that uh, the government of the Republic of Namibia should continue to foster efforts of exploring more energy options. Um, it can still be oil as it's happening currently, although the world is moving now to green energy, but green energy will also be welcome because there's not really much that will happen in terms of the global prices impacting directly in terms of Namibia's trade openness. So there's also needs to manage the current debt levels uh, because uh, the debt levels to the GDP that is above 60%, it's almost 70% country, but 69 point something. Um, that is problematic if allowed to continue in that order because the country has been downgraded so much in terms of uh, external borrowing, as well as the sustainability of this debt over a period of time. The only other opportunity that the country has is to try and grow the economy uh, exponentially for it to remain like that for over a period of time, because that will undercut uh, debt, meaning as the economy grows, more can be availed in terms of resources to address unemployment, as well as to, to service the debt that is skyrocketing. With these words, let me thank you very much for listening. Over to you, Director of Ceremonies. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nyambe, for the presentation. Could you close your uh, PowerPoint presentation, please? Okay. Uh, to all the participants, Dr. Nyambi has presented his uh, uh, paper on the Namibia's oil export and its relation with the openness of its trade uh, from the economic perspectives. However, if you would like to ask questions, you could put your questions on the question and answer chat box. So we already listened to two presenters today. The first is His Excellency Ambassador al Bushra Basnur and the second one was Dr. Jacob M. Nyambe. I will invite uh, some uh, questions. Yeah, uh, I, There are four questions already in the chat box and the two one has been answered by uh, Ambassador Al-Bushra. There are two other questions uh, for Satrio Santoso, from Satrio Santoso. Uh, first is in what way digital diplomacy can foster greater cooperation and trade between Ethiopia and Indonesia in 2020? Uh, is there enough infrastructure in Ethiopia supporting the growth of economy in the country? And from uh, again from Satrio Santoso, uh, uh, the question for uh, Dr. Nyambe, with the outbreak of Omicron or the emergence of Omicron in Africa, how does this affect the trade and economy of African countries? And how do you see the role of great powers such as China and the US in Africa during the pandemic era? Is there any significant growth of their presence today? So uh, this is the two questions, one for doc, uh, Dr. Nyambe and one for uh, Ambassador al Bushra. Uh, I, wait, there is one more question from Sri Nilasari Susanti. There is no indication to whom this question uh, present, but the question is how to create competitive advantage to be able to compete in Africa. I think this might be uh, suitable also for Ambassador al Bushra concerning a competitive advantage in trade in Africa. And if Uh, Dr. Nyambi would like to answer this question also welcome. So while waiting for other questions, I will give the time first to Ambassador Al-Bushra to answer the questions. Time is yours. 
Thank you very much, Ibu Daula, uh, from our friend uh, from Satrio. And also the, uh, uh, the, the, the the first question posted on the uh, chat, ro uh, chat room uh, that's already about the, uh, you know, the potential sectors. I already uh, explained it on my presentations, uh, uh, things like the Indonesian palm, uh, palm oil and so on and so on, about the potential sector or product, right? And I, like, I also like to under, under, underline the importance of the, uh, you know, the, the most potential, you know, uh, uh, export from Indonesia to Ethiopia as of now is that the pharmaceutical products, pharmaceutical products. Even so far, the, 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 the number one the export from Indonesia to Ethiopia is palm oil, palm oil and the paper. Uh, including the the books, yeah, uh, uh, writing books for the schools. That is also one of the uh, you know the, the favorite you know uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, import products from uh, Indonesia. And uh, if we talk about the palm oils uh, from Indonesia exported to Indonesia to Ethiopia, uh, this is. A something that really interesting that, that we have to think about it I every time I met with the Indonesian businessman and also Ethiopian businessman because uh, there are still so many uh, uh, export from Indonesia to Ethiopia or import uh, to Ethiopia from Indonesia where are from the through the third countries can you imagine it my dear friends palm oil coffee products from Indonesia came to Ethiopia through Singapore, Singapore companies, not from Jakarta, not from Medan, not from other, you know, uh, ports of Indonesia, but through Singapore. So they, our friends and businessmen still use, uh, you know, uh, doing business through the third countries. Why don't I, I urge all friends in Indonesia and also in Ethiopia, please do direct, uh, you know, uh, uh, trade cooperation. And also, there is a, a, a questions about the, the, what is the, the main problems, right? Uh, the, 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 is that because Indonesian businessmen still, you know, have a lot of, you know, lack of knowledge, lack of information about the potentials in Africa. In 2019, I was invited as a speaker for the uh, in the uh, Trade Expo Indonesia annual exposition in Jakarta, right? So I was invited to speak about uh, you know uh, potential market in uh, Africa to Indonesia. There are about uh, two or three businessmen raised the questions and told me that ambassador when we listened to the name of the Ethiopia and the potentials of the economic cooperation. We are not very interested because you don't know nothing about you know the 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 the, the, the product that we can sell there about the potential market there. So what does it mean? It means that we are still lacking of the information about the current situation about the potential of you know the economic cooperation with Ethiopia. Yes, we know Africa uh, about Africa. Yes, people, our friends, our sisters and brothers in Indonesia knows uh, Africa with a 1.3 billion people. But still, many, many, many of us, our friends, businessmen, we don't know. Uh, you know the the what kind of the the product Africa needs and what kind of the products Indonesia needs from Africa. So talking about the uh, digital diplomacy, uh, yes, since uh, two and a half years ago, here in Ethiopia especially, uh, uh, digital diplomacy is one of our main and major media to do our diplomacy and also, of course, to boost the economic cooperation between the businessmen from two countries not only among the big companies Indonesia and Ethiopia but also among the young entrepreneurs so that why in June 11 2019 we launched Indonesia Ethiopia 
Youth Association. And not only that one, we also launch the new forum. We call it Indonesia Ethiopia Young Entrepreneurs Forum, a digital basis business. So this forum we organize it three times already every year. So this is a good, uh, you know, we believe that the the uh, through by using the startup based, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, business and companies. So the relations between the young entrepreneurs in Indonesia and Ethiopia, and I believe in other countries in Africa, will be increased significantly. Why? Because we know that in Indonesia, the use of internet, the use of the uh, you know all kind of application uh, by using the internet increased significantly, and the same thing happened here in Ethiopia, and I believe in other countries like in Namibia as well they increase significantly. So I think uh, that is also one of our uh, duty, especially, uh, you know, the, for, for an, uh, the embassy of Indonesia in African countries, uh, we have to, you know, encourage, we have to push the cooperation between the young entrepreneurs in two countries. So next about the infrastructure, about infrastructure. Ethiopia has a good uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, I can, uh, you know, uh, inform you, my friends, Satrio and other friends. This is also, uh, I, I wrote in this, my book about Ethiopia. Uh, Africa, the average asphalt, asphalted uh, road in African continent is about 50% of the road in Africa already asphalted in average. And in Ethiopia, 85% of the public road already asphalted. And this is really, really helpful, and this is really, uh, you know, uh, 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 very significant meanings for the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, in doing uh, business and uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, product distribution, not only to the main cities like in uh, Addis Ababa, but also in other, you know, uh, small city, cities in the region. And another thing I like to inform you uh, how good the uh, infrastructure in Ethiopia and neighboring country like Djibouti, for instance. Djibouti is a small country in size. Uh, the population only about one million people, uh, located in the northeast of uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, in front of Yaman, uh, Aden Gulf, around the Aden Gulf. So, 95% of the product of uh, in Ethiopia exporting and uh, importing through Djibouti because Djibouti has uh, modern and uh, big uh, harbor uh, to uh, for the you know the uh, uh, for the uh, transporting the, uh, the the export and import products so i repeat 95% of product in ethiopia comes and go uh, come and go through uh, 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 what do you call it the uh, Djibouti right so uh, that is the situation that, uh, about the infrastructure in uh, Ethiopia. And, and uh, from the, uh, my friend Sri Nilasari uh, about the competitive advantage. Well, very short. I can answer very short. Come and see Ethiopia. Come and see Ethiopia. Or you can contact the embassies of Indonesia in uh, in an African continent. As, as, as I said earlier, that we have a 16, one six embassies in Africa and one consulate general office in the South Africa. So, uh, seeing is believing. Because I have, a, you know, uh, as I said, that, that there are five Indonesian companies investing here in, 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 in Africa. Uh, I, I met with them uh, frequently and then they always uh, told me that uh, Indonesian businessmen have to come to see Africa, not only to listen to someone, listen to the news, listen to from other kind of the information, but it will be better to see directly and come to Ethiopia, seeing is believing. Right. Thank you very much, Ibu. Okay, thank you, uh, Ambassador al -Bushra. There are still many questions, but I'm very sorry. I cannot take all the questions because of the time limits. And now I will give uh, time to Dr. Nyambe to answer the questions uh, presented by Satrio Santoso also on the effect of the Omicron uh, virus in the trade 
in Africa. Time is this your Dr. Nyambe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director Ceremonies. Um, again, um, maybe just to take the questions in that order, I will start with the one of the Omicron. Uh, I think the, the challenge with, with such is that um, tourism is delayed or halted to some extent. As you know that uh, uh, there's an impositioning of a, of a ban on flights from extreme Southern Africa to especially Europe and the US. So that, that affects uh, the economy so much or the economies of the countries in Southern Africa. Um, it's not only that, but even goods, they get delayed to be delivered because they are new uh, COVID protocols that can come into place. Uh, so that unpredictability of the situation can, can be problematic. Uh, of course, there may also be diversion of resources that were initially meant for, for certain activities that would benefit the economies, but uh, now you have to divert that to other possibilities of maybe engaging into some other preventative measures. So that is, that is a challenge. There was a question on how do I see the role of China and the U.S. in Africa uh, during the pandemic? Um, ES has great powers. It's, it's known that there's been an aspect of vaccine apartheid, which is known. Um, so at the same time, it should also be understood that their role is at the same time uh, significant, especially on the side of um, what has developed recently where they are able to show that they can also assist Africa with the needed vaccines. Uh, relaxing the business tendencies that were already known in the past to an extent that Africa can also start benefiting. But I think more, more to that would be that uh, their roles are more into testing Africa to see whether Africa would respond and as to who has a better relationship with Africa. So such again could be problematic for African countries. There is a question on, I think it's significant growth, significant growth of their presence. Of course, uh, um, like I'm saying, Af I mean, America and, and, and or the US and China are more business-minded normally, um, in as much as they have the humanitarian aspect. But I think both, of course, I may not be very precise, but both they attempt to satisfy their own business expectations. There was a question, which is the last one, on how to create a competitive advantage to be able to compete in Africa. I think it becomes more into looking at sectors within Africa that are more let me say, they, that have a comparative advantage or that have comparative advantage with the trading partners that are beyond Africa, but as well looking at Africa's infrastructure, uh, regulatory frameworks, as well as issues to do with uh, the movement of labor. That is very important because some other countries are well placed with labor that is uh, skilled labor compared to others. I think looking to such and integrating the network uh, that Africa requires in those areas, including green energy, I think that will help Africa to be competitive. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nyambe. Ladies and gentlemen, all the participants of this Indo-African seminar, we are arrived at the end of this first session. I would like to give my uh, gratitude to Ambassador al Kushra for very insightful uh, presentations on the uh, trade relations between Ethiopia and Indonesia and also to Dr. Nyambe for the presentations concerning the Namibian uh, situations on trade. And on behalf of the uh, organizer of this seminar, let us give applause to all of the presenters. Thank you very much once again and we will proceed with the second session yeah, because the time is quite uh, limited so I will give uh, the time to Dr. Maharani Hapsari who will chair the second sessions. Thank you very much once again and good afternoon. Thank you very much Ibu. I like to steal the time. Hello, pa. Hello. I like to say my colleague, Pa Harris, I put an ambassador in Nairobi. Ambassador Al-Busra. 
I enjoy I enjoy uh, listening your uh, explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi Dr. Yakub, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Mas Riza, thank you. Thank you, Carl, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I think we can begin the second session of the webinar. Uh, honorable and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, allow me to welcome you to this second round of the seminar, uh, which brings the theme on the future trajectories and opportunities of Africa-Indonesia trade. So the session will be conducted in one hour with 15 minutes presentation from each speaker, followed by 25 minutes questions and answer session. All participants are welcome to raise questions and comments through the chat board as the presentation is running. Let me introduce our first speaker, uh, Professor Azdin Gufran. He obtained his BA in Political Science, uh, University de Hassan II, Casablanca, Morocco in 1979, and developed his postgraduate career at the University de Nancy II, France and obtained his master's degree in international relations in 1984 and a PhD in international public law in 1994. Professor Gufran is currently dean and chairholder of the WTO chairs program at the Faculty of Law, Economics and Social Science, the Mohammed V University of Rabat, Morocco. Professor Gufran will deliver 15-minute presentation on the prospect of Africa-Indonesia trade relations, a Morocco or North African perspective. Professor, the floor is yours. Donc, bonjour, honorable assistance, honorable ambassadeur et responsable de l'université Gadjamajda. Du centre universitaire indo-africain. Donc, euh, avant d'aborder le thème qui m'a été confié, à savoir euh, les relations commerciales maroco-indonésiennes, je voudrais remercier les organisateurs. Le sous-binaire, qu'il s'agisse qu des responsables de l'université Gadja Mada et mon ami le professeur Reza Alfani, titulaire de la chaire de l'OMC. Bonjour. Bonjour, professeur. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Donc euh, voilà, et je vais essayer dans cette intervention d'articuler mon propos autour de deux axes. Euh, euh, le premier, il est relatif à l'état des lieux, euh, les relations entre le Maroc et l'Indonésie sur le plan commercial. And, uh, uh, Et dans le deuxième axe, je vais essayer de parler du potentiel, du potentiel des relations maroco-indonésiennes. Donc, euh, je vais essayer d'aller un peu moins vite parce pour les besoins de l'interprétariat. Merci. S'agissant donc de l'état des lieux de, de relations, et donc en ce qui concerne les rapports entre le Maroc et l'Indonésie d'une manière générale, il convient de rappeler que tout d'abord que les deux pays ont célébré le 19 avril. 2021, le 60e anniversaire, le 60e anniversaire de ces relations et que ces relations sont historiques 
et remonte à 1955, euh, lorsque le Maroc a participé à la conférence euh, afro-asiatique de Bandung. Et aussi, il convient de rappeler que le chef d'État indonésien, Sokarno, a visité officiellement le Maroc en 1960. Et cependant, cependant l'observation de l'évolution des relations entre le Maroc et l'Indonésie Euh, l'observateur de ces relations ne peut qu'être frappé, il ne peut qu'être frappé par les bonnes relations politiques entre les deux pays et la faiblesse des relations économiques entre eux. Donc, malgré l'existence d'un cadre juridique et institutionnel, qui régule les relations bilatérales sur le plan économique, la force est de constater que ces relations demeurent en deçà de leur potentiel. Donc, en termes, en termes d'importation, le Maroc n'a importé de l'Indonésie en 2020 qu'environ 100, euh, 100 millions de dollars. Euh, le contexte de la pandémie du COVID-19 ne peut ne peut euh, expliquer la faiblesse euh, car en 2019 les importations en 2019 c'est-à-dire avant la crise pandémique les, les importations euh, import, les importations indonésiennes étaient de l'ordre de 120 millions de dollars Donc, donc, comparé à ce que l'Indonésie exporte vers le monde, et la valeur des importations marocaines en provenance, en provenance de l'Indonésie demeure très faible. Donc, comme vous le savez, il convient de signaler que l'Indonésie a exporté vers le monde en 2020 163 milliards, 163 milliards, 300 millions et 490 000 dollars. Donc, 163 milliards, 306 millions et 89 000 dollars. Donc, euh, Donc, s'agissant cette fois des exportations marocaines vers l'Indonésie, force est de constater qu'ils n'ont pas dépassé en 2020 25 millions, 25 millions, 170 000 dollars. Et et même avant la pandémie, et même avant la pandémie de la COVID-19, euh, leur valeur en 2019, en 2019, n'a pas atteint 50 millions de dollars. Euh, soit exactement 47 millions euh, de dollars. Euh, 
Donc, conscient, euh, conscient de la faiblesse des échanges, euh, des échanges commerciaux, le Maroc et l'Indonésie ont créé en 2021, ils ont créé en 2021, Ils ont créé le Conseil Marocco-Indonésien, le Conseil Marocco-Indonésien, en vue de promouvoir leurs leur relations commerciales et l'investissement, en vue de promouvoir leurs relations commerciales et l'investissement entre Rabat et Jakarta. Et, et ils ont entamé des négociations en vue de la conclusion d'un accord commercial préférentiel visant à simuler bien sûr les échanges commerciaux et les investissements entre les deux pays. En ce qui concerne maintenant le potentiel des relations maroco-indonésiennes dans le domaine du commerce et dans le domaine de l'investissement, les, respons les responsables des deux pays ont l'ambition de développer, de, de développer la coopération économique En capitalisant, en capitalisant sur les potentialités et les complémentarités entre les deux pays. Justement, euh, le président du Conseil marocco-indonésien pour la coopération et l'investissement a précisé à cet effet en avril 2021, que la position stratégique du Maroc aux portes de l'Union européenne et du continent africain constitue un atout très important Et, et le, le même président, il a ajouté, et il a ajouté que le Maroc pourrait permettre I think we have a delay in connection. I think Professor Gufran is disconnected from this forum. Could I still see his screen? Uh, he's oh, rejoining. Back. He's back, yes. Professor Gufran. Donc, je peux reprendre. OK, vous m'entendez? OK. Donc, je disais que euh, le président du Conseil maroco-indonésien de la coopération a mis l'accent sur le fait que le Maroc pourrait permettre aux entreprises indonésiennes euh, d'accéder à un marché d'un milliard 500 millions de consommateurs. Et il a ajouté que c'est le Maroc qui constitue un vrai portail, aussi bien pour le continent africain que celui européen. Donc, je peux continuer toujours
I can continue always in French? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, of course. Yes, please. Bien sûr. Donc, euh, le positionnement géographique du Maroc euh, et son choix d'ouverture commerciale dans le cadre régional et multilatéral, il faut rappeler que le Maroc euh, a, passé, a conclu beaucoup d'accords de libre-échange, soit avec les pays développés, l'Union européenne, les États-Unis d'Amérique, et également avec des pays émergents comme la Turquie, ou avec des pays arabes, par exemple l'accord d'Agadir avec la Tunisie, la Jordanie et l'Égypte. Donc, il a presque une douzaine d'accords de libre-échange. Et le Maroc, bien sûr, il, fait, il a adhéré à l'accord portant création de la zone de libre-échange continentale. Donc, cette ouverture du Maroc sur le plan commercial, tant régional, bilatéral, multilatéral, qualifie le Maroc de jouer un rôle de tête de pont euh, pour plusieurs puissances commerciales développées émergentes euh, dans l'Indonésie. Et, et, et en vue de booster justement les relations commerciales bilatérales entre le Maroc et l'Indonésie, le président du Conseil maroco-indonésien des affaires a proposé en 2021 la multiplication par 100 la multiplication par 100 du volume du commerce bilatéral et la prospection d'importantes euh, niches de coopération. Et donc, outre les accords de libre-échange conclus par le Maroc, et le dernier, comme je viens de le rappeler, c'est l'accord relatif à la mise en place de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, le Maroc offre également outre des opportunités commerciales, des opportunités aux investisseurs indonésiens, dans le cadre, bien sûr, d'une approche de coopération économique gagnant-gagnant, en tirant profit, bien sûr, comme l'a dit l'ambassadeur indonésien au Maroc, de leur avantage comparatif. Et outre le potentiel de coopération économique bilatérale dans le domaine du commerce, il y a des opportunités pour les deux pays dans la promotion de la, ce qu'on appelle la coopération euh, triangulaire. Euh, S'agissant cette fois du potentiel euh, commercial entre les deux pays, euh, le Maroc et l'Indonésie ont déjà identifié les produits potentiels qui peuvent booster leurs échanges commerciaux bilatéraux. Donc, l'Indonésie a identifié notamment des composants automobiles, des produits de cuir, du café, des textiles, des meubles, etc. Donc, les produits les plus exportés vers le marché marocain actuellement qui ont un potentiel d'expansion extraordinaire. Quant au Maroc, il a identifié comme potentiel les phosphates, les engrais minéraux ou chimiques, l'automobile, etc. Et en matière d'investissement, le potentiel identifié renvoie notamment à l'agroalimentaire, à l'industrie automobile et au secteur touristique. Et je ne peux pas parler du potentiel sans rappeler que le Maroc euh, priorise la coopération euh, sud-sud avec les pays euh, de l'Afrique subsaharienne. Et à cet effet, il faut rappeler que le Maroc est membre de deux communautés économiques régionales. Et comme je l'ai rappelé, il a signé l'accord pour la création de l'ASLECAP, la zone de l'échange continental africain. Deuxièmement, le Maroc est le premier investisseur africain en Afrique de l'Ouest et le deuxième investisseur africain en Afrique. Et bien sûr, il y a une présence notable des banques marocaines en Afrique et également des entreprises qu'on considère comme les champions nationaux et surtout... Euh, dans le domaine des services, dans le domaine de l'agroalimentaire et surtout, il y a pas mal 
de projets de coopération dans l'agroalimentaire et qui vont dans le sens de la mise en place d'une valeur, d'une chaîne de valeur régionale. Il y a par exemple un accord avec l'Éthiopie dans ce domaine, un accord avec le, le Nigeria dans le domaine de l'agroalimentaire. Et il y a un grand projet maintenant de portée régionale qui a été lancé par le Maroc et le Nigeria, à savoir le gazotique euh, Nigeria, euh, Maroc, qui, qui, qui a pour ambition d'approvisionner pas seulement les pays africains, mais également le marché européen. Donc voilà euh, globalement ce que, je, ce que je peux dire sur l'état des lieux des relations commerciales et sur le potentiel de ces relations, j'ai abordé davantage euh, c'est-à-dire le volet commercial, j'ai parlé moins des investissements, mais il y a c'est-à-dire qu'il y a un cadre juridique, juridique ou institutionnel, pas mal d'accords dans, dans le domaine, et qu'il y a un potentiel. Et, et je vous remercie pour votre attention. Excusez-moi si j'ai fait même mon intervention en français, parce que mon ami Riza Alfani, il sait bien que mon anglais n'est pas affluent pour que je puisse faire cette intervention en anglais. Et merci pour votre attention. Yes, merci, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Professor Azim Gufran, for your insightful presentation. So we noted from um, his explanation that there are many aspects of the bilateral relations between Indonesia and Morocco that is underexplored, and this could also reflect the situation uh, in general when we talk about Africa-Indonesia relations. So we're seeking to stimulate the existing trade exchange and we are keen, I suppose, to look at some strategic sectors in which um, different business sectors and government sectors can build linkages in the future. Thank you very much. Now we will welcome um, the next speaker of the session, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Heri Saripudin, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Somalia, UNEP, and UN Habitat in Nairobi, Kenya. Ambassador Saripudin first joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia in 1989. His first assignment was at the Directorate of Asia and Pacific Affairs. Through most of his career, of over 17 years, he has been actively involved in foreign economic relations at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Upon completion of his assignment at the permanent mission of the Republic of Indonesia to the United Nations in New York, he served as the Director for Policy Analysis and Development on Asia, Pacific and Africa Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Prior to his assignment, as the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to the Republic of Kenya, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Federal Republic of Somalia, and the Republic of Uganda, and as permanent representative to UNEP and UN Habitat, he served as Indonesian Consul General at the Consulate General of the Republic of Indonesia in Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Ambassador Saripudin will share his view on the prospect of Africa-Indonesia trade relations from an Indonesian perspective. Mr. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ba Maharani Hapsari. And now first and foremost, of course, I would like to uh, express my sincere appreciation uh, to Center of uh, World Trade studies and also WTO chairs program of uh, Gajah Mada University and also the co-organizer, the University of uh, Namibia. And uh, also uh, nice to be back uh, with uh, the epistemic communities from the campus uh, with Master Riza, Mbak Meni, and also, of course, uh, I have to mention my uh, dear colleagues, my patrons, uh, my senior, and I learned a lot from uh, the ambassador, uh, His Excellency Al Busra, uh, is uh, at the, uh, from the same region here, uh, is uh, Africa, and I also noticed that uh, there is a colleague from uh, the embassy of uh, Windhoek, uh, Namibia. 
And uh, I would like also uh, thanks to Prof, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Azaldin Gufron for uh, nice presentations. And uh, now my, uh, I'm given uh, uh, the topics on the prospects of Africa-Indonesia trade relations from an uh, Indonesian perspective, of course, uh, to be precise from my uh, personal uh, perspective. Uh, uh, well, before it's, uh, today, I would like to at glance uh, uh, the other I choose the title is Twende Africa. It means let's go to Africa. This is the Swahili's uh, word for Twende Africa. Next slide. Uh, of course, uh, just now the uh, Jumbo, Jumbo is mean hello, the uh, Swahili uh, words. And uh, today I will uh, present at least uh, four. Uh, uh, Four topics. One is uh, the, about the opportunity, and then the, what is the challenges that we uh, we face, and then uh, the profile of uh, uh, the accredited uh, countries uh, in uh, East African uh, region. And the last is uh, uh, conclusion. Well, when we talk about Africa, uh, Ambassador. Uh, Al Busra just mentioned uh, AU have uh, 55 countries and from uh, UN's uh, perspective the UN acknowledge for uh, 54 countries because uh, at uh, EU uh, they recognize uh, West, uh, Western Sahara or Saharawi uh, republics and uh, I would like to more specific focus on sub-Sahara Africa. When we talk about Africa as a continent, of course, uh, uh, no, normally we divide it into two, uh, Sub-Sahara Africa and MENA, uh, Middle East, uh, uh, North uh, Africa. Of course, uh, in terms of the uh, ethnicity, is uh, quite different from North Africa, more are, uh, Arabic uh, and uh, ethnic and Arabic, uh, they share Arabic uh, languages. And in uh, uh, so uh, sub-Sahara Africa is uh, uh, very much uh, different. And uh, when we talk about what is the opportunity, look at uh, there are five long-term trends and growth factors in Africa. First, uh, about the population. Uh, the whole African uh, continent have uh, 1.2 billion population. Uh, they live uh, spread out in uh, 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 54 or 55 uh, countries, depends on uh, the way you look at it. And also, uh, out of 1.2 billion, uh, more than 50% uh, uh, are youth. And it's the, uh, the, the productive uh, age uh, when we talk about the... the uh, 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 Productive uh, age is mean uh, under the 32 uh, year old. And then at 80% are allocated in the urban area. That's the opportunity. When we talk, when, uh, when uh, you figure out the uh, young uh, generations in the urban, they are still productive. It's mean that uh, it's uh, the positive factors for uh, the productivity for the uh, uh, the trade and then industrialization. Of course, right now uh, we we can see like uh, presentation uh, presented by Ambassador Al Busra that uh, uh, the way you look at uh, Africa should be changed and not uh, uh, like the uh, the twenty or uh, ten years. Uh, ago but uh, the industrialization program almost we can see in uh, every single countries in the africa and then uh, the third one is uh, the infrastructure project is very much massive uh, under the au they have uh, you know the uh, they call it presidential infrastructure project there are 10 uh, projects it was uh, commission uh, the, uh, the high representative for infrastructure projects under the eu uh, is uh, former 
uh, Prime Minister of Kenya. I met him and uh, he explained about the 10 uh, uh, quite uh, mega infrastructure projects. The infrastructures is the uh, uh, is kind of uh, the pillar of uh, uh, economic uh, economic growth. They they explain how African every single African countries are connected by infrastructure from uh, Cairo in Egypt uh, in, uh, in the north to uh, Cape Town in the south from Mombasa in the east uh, to Yonde in the west, they, they connected. And uh, that's the, the, the program uh, uh, under the infrastructure. And then also the uh, uh, related with the industrialization is on agriculture. It used to be uh, they, uh, they produce raw uh, primary uh, ag uh, agriculture product and now, uh, because of the demand, uh, the demand uh, at domestic is uh, increasing. Uh, they, uh, they, the, the products made only for uh, uh, most of them for uh, domestic, but also they uh, uh, manufacture uh, to get uh, added values for uh, agriculture product to be exported. And then the last, uh, the last uh, trend is. Uh, the development of uh, digital economy, digital access. Uh, if you uh, notice that uh, everywhere, especially in the uh, East African, uh, the habit, the the behavior they do uh, the tran uh, business transaction is uh, by uh, mobile uh, mobile money, mobile banking. Uh, so they they never like myself. I never carry a uh, big cash, uh, but uh, we always uh, everywhere we uh, make uh, transactions. Uh, we do with uh, M-Pesa, they call it like uh, OVO maybe in in Indonesia. So how the the uh, the, the development. Uh, uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite progressive, and when we talk about sub-Saharan Africa, look at that. Uh, I said the population one point uh, 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 mil mil uh, billions. Uh, so it's mean uh, uh, one in Indonesia satu koma satu miliar ya one point one billion. And then the GDP, and uh, GDP uh, in the 2020, 1.6 trillion for the sub-Saharan. In fact, uh, that's uh, debatable. Uh, I just uh, read from uh, Kenyan uh, official uh, statistic. They said that the GDP uh, in the continent is 3.4 uh, trillions. Uh, but anyhow, it's uh, showing the uh, the uh, the huge uh, the, the massive number, and also the income per capita, the average uh, in the 2020 uh, one point uh, one thousand four hundred something. Of course, uh, there is a less uh, one country and there is a bigger. Let's say like in Kenya, in Kenya itself, the income per capita right now is uh, approaching a two thousand one uh, one thousand nine hundred something. And uh, if you look at the figure, the top five countries, uh, be it for exporting or importing, is dominated only by China, India, South Africa, uh, US, and German or uh, Netherlands. That's the five biggest uh, trading partners uh, for uh, African uh, countries. Next. And uh, uh, Ambassador Abusra mentioned that uh, since... Uh, the first day of January this year, the African continental free trade area already uh, entered into force. Uh, the, the agreement itself, the draft agreement itself, it was signed uh, since 2018. And uh, of course, almost everybody uh, already there, uh, uh, all the African uh, Union me member uh, country uh, member countries uh, uh, 50, uh, 55 uh, Ambassador Abu already mentioned. If you look at in the map, uh, every single uh, uh, region have their own uh, economic uh, regional arrangement. 
let's say like in South Africa, there is SADC. In uh, uh, West uh, Africa, there is ECOAS. In uh, Eastern uh, Africa, there is uh, AEC and uh, COMESA. So it's a, uh, uh, you, you take a look at that uh, how the structure uh, the, the, the structures of African continental free trade area is, uh, uh, came up not from the top to uh, top uh, bottom, but uh, from uh, bottom uh, go, going up uh, from bilateral and then regional and then uh, the, uh, the con uh, continent. And uh, this uh, African continental free trade area is already envisioned by the leaders of African since uh, two decades ago, uh, in, uh, stated clearly at the Abuja Treaty in 1991. Uh, even there is a discourse, there's a, a, dis a discussion that uh, this one is going to leading, leading to uh, as a stepping stone to African Economic Community and. Uh, custom unions. Uh, we don't know when uh, it will be achieved. And in fact, there is also discourse uh, uh, based on uh, Pan-Africanism. There, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, in uh, a corner of uh, scholars, uh, they, they also have a big dream on a United State of Africa. But uh, of course, uh, uh, I don't think it will be achieved in the uh, a short uh, period of ta time. This is the opportunity uh, for Indonesia. And then who is the trading partner? When you get uh, just now we mentioned, next slide, uh, we, uh, we mentioned about uh, China, India, and look at Indonesia. Indonesia, uh, in terms of uh, the growth rate, since 2006 to 2018, uh, the 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 growth is more than double. It's a uh, two hundred twenty four uh, percentage of uh, the the growth. It means, uh, if I can interpret that, uh, the prospect, the opportunity doing business uh, for the Indonesia uh, to Africa is quite huge. Next slide. And but what is the challenges? The challenges almost every uh, African co uh, countries, uh, continents. Uh, this uh, uh, I make a generalization. Of course, the tri uh, tribal or ethnic politics still there. It's uh, the 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 uh, inherited uh, by the colonial uh, power because. Uh, if you are African uh, uh, students, African uh, African students, of course, uh, you are very much aware that how the way the Western uh, colonial powers uh, divided uh, the African into the countries just like arbitrarily. Uh, they didn't uh, consider uh, the uh, constellations of ethnic. So uh, once ethnic belong to two countries, divided, and then uh, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, also always uh, a problem, always an issue until now, tribal politics, especially when uh, the country is facing the general elections. Then the, the issue is uh, raised up. And then the, the second is authoritarian uh, government. Not all, but uh, is dominated uh, either uh, militarily, militarily or uh, authoritarians or uh, uh, repressive and so on and so forth. And then uh, the corruption is still rampant. Uh, we, we are not blinded eyes. Uh, and also uh, the internal ethnic conflicts, it's related with the, the, the first factor. That's uh, the, the, the uh, general uh, features. Of course, when we uh, uh, zoom in, uh, to the, the different countries, uh, the nuance will be uh, different. I quote from McKenzie African, just you can look at, uh, this is uh, their four quadrant. The first quadrant from the uh, right uh, hand side, it's mean that uh, when the country, go, uh, the political uh, stable, it's mean you go to uh, right hand side, and uh, when the uh, political in, uh, instability was there or in, vulnerable is going uh, left, 
And then if uh, the uh, growth, economic growth rates are high, it's uh, uh, on the top and it's in a, in a, uh, 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 in a, when uh, the lower is going down. So you can uh, take a look at by, by yourself, uh, where's the, 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 the position it is quite, uh, quite uh, spread. And uh, for Kenya, of course, uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can see there where is Kenya. Kenya is uh, you uh, belongs to high uh, uh, stable politically compared with the others, and uh, economic uh, growth is uh, moderate. Uh, I mean, not that that's, uh, so lower. Uh, next slide. <laughs> And then uh, what's the, the, the profile of uh, credit countries? I'm covering for countries, Kenya, uh, 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 Republic Democratic Congo, and the next slide, uh, uh, Somalia and Uganda. And uh, I'm fortunate, uh, I've been here already a year. I came here on November last year, and uh, I finished, I met every single president of those four uh, countries uh, personally and uh, I have a dis uh, nice discussion and a very positive response with uh, all those four uh, presidents uh, in uh, strengthening Indonesian uh, uh, with the respected uh, countries cooperation and then when we uh, look at uh, about the population Kenya is 92 uh, oh, sorry K Kenya is uh, 52 uh, Congo 60 uh, 86 Somalia uh, 15, Uganda 44. That's uh, the, uh, the, uh, the current uh, situations. And uh, I said uh, about the income per capita. The, uh, of course, compared with Indonesia, Kenya uh, is uh, uh, less than uh, 50% than, uh, than uh, Indonesian per capita. Indonesian per capita already 4,100. And uh, Kenyan uh, almost 1,900 uh, and the rest, uh, as you can see. And what is the category? That's the, the Kenyan is still uh, middle income countries and the rest is uh, low income countries. How the, the way you look at the uh, growth uh, GDP, economic growth, if you, if you look at it, uh, uh, the black line is world uh, economic growth, world GDP growth. And yellow is uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, my four uh, accredited countries is the average, always above the average of South Saharan Africa and even above the, uh, the uh, world GDP growth. Next slide. And uh, Kenya, why, why Kenya? Kenya is the, the entrance gate to the East African region. There is a big uh, uh, port, Mombasa port. It was uh, according to the travelogue of uh, Ibn Battuta from uh, Morocco. Uh, it was already vibrant since uh, uh, 14th uh, century. Uh, uh, he visited Mombasa in uh, 1330, 1330, and uh, he looked at that uh, there is a vibrant uh, Islamic uh, population uh, life there. And when they sail to uh, the most eastern is uh, Samudra Pasai in Aceh right now in uh, 1333, and there is a similarity. Uh, between the, the com community, so, so uh, society life in Mombasa and in, in Aceh, in uh, Samudra Pasai. So I always mention there is no uh, arguments uh, Kenya not to do business with Indonesia and vice versa. Because both countries are uh, neighbors. There is no third country separating us, only uh, in the ocean uh united us so we are we are neighbor actually uh, next slide and this uh only uh the the value uh of uh, bilateral uh trade indonesia and kenya although we are in a very tough situation of COVID pandemic but uh, last year our trade bilateral trade are increased 40 percent and uh that's uh, the, the, if I can interpret, uh, it's mean that uh, it depends on how the way we uh, uh, promote that trade. 
uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Al Busra have a uh, very excellent uh, program uh, Indonesia Ethiopia uh, uh, economic program and we also do have we just launched uh, we call it Soko La Indonesia it means that uh, uh, supermarket style Indonesian products house uh, we as, uh, we have uh, in my building right now more than 2500 items product items from uh, SMEs from Indonesia and uh, we have regularly a program to facilitate between uh, Kenyan uh business peoples and indonesia and uh, in this uh, opportunity i also invite uh, those who have a uh, business please send your uh, products uh, sample and uh, i'm me men and my team are willing to uh, showcasing uh, that product i dedicated one building in in a uh, embassy complex to uh, uh, to Uh, the, uh, uh, to this uh, to be designed as a sokola indonesia or uh, supermarket style indonesian products house and uh, uh, next slide i will go to the conclusion uh, this the, the as i mentioned uh, the, the the values uh, of the, the trade and then this is the, the opposite Conclusion. I will uh, mention actually there are three uh, three uh, items. I said Africa is the future destination for trade, and uh, it is also uh, clearly expressed by not only the president of Bapa uh, of Indonesia, Bapa President uh, Joko Widodo, but also uh, uh, by. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ibu Retno Marsudi, she mentioned that when you are talking, when you are uh, dealing about uh, Indonesian economic diplomacy, Africa will be the main theater of Indonesian economic diplomacy. So, uh, Ambassador uh, Al Busra, me, myself, and all the 16 ambassadors of Indonesia in, in Africa and one uh, Consul General, we implement, we uh, materialize the vision of uh, Bapak Presiden Joko Widodo and Ibu uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ibu Retno, to make it African as the main theaters of a, a Indonesian economic diplomacy happens. And uh, how to make it happen? Of course, we have to shift our uh, our constituent, our uh, business people's paradigm. There's the how do we do shift a paradigm? I will mention in this word there are four perspectives. There are four uh, perception uh, on Africa. One, they always uh, uh, the way they see Africa. Africa is you know uh, there's a poverty, there is AIDS, there is Ebola, there is a, a drought, and so on and so forth. So their perspective, uh, their, they perceive that oh, Africa need the help. Africa need an assistance. So the humanitarians are there. And uh, one of the uh, dominant uh, perception here is uh, shared by the UK. Uh, you see in, uh, in, uh, 19, uh, in the decades of 80s, uh, the artists, the uh, like Bob Geldof, Age for Africa. That's a, that's a vision is always come uh, the way they look at Africa. And then the, the, uh, the other perception, they, they always look at Africa from a political security uh, perspective. Africa, oh, there is a al, uh, al sebab Boko Haram, uh, Al-Qaeda, ethnic conflict, and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, that's uh, normally uh, we, we look at the, uh, from the U.S. Uh, perspective. France, they always mention, you know, uh, they they love their own uh, uh, culture, they love their own uh, language, even they don't want to speak in uh, uh, in English. So, uh, from uh, the French perspective, uh, uh, Africa is like uh, uh, cultural assets uh, for them. 
uh, even for Africans, uh, the way I look at, the, let's say, if I dealing with uh, people from uh, Democratic Republic uh, uh, Congo, they behave, they speak uh, uh, more French than the, uh, the French people. The fourth uh, uh, perspective is China. China look at uh, Africa is wow. This is the uh, uh, the money was there, the prosperity was there. So everything from a uh, China perspective, Africa is uh, uh, is uh, you know the prosperity. So uh, since the the end of the uh, the end of the post Cold War, when everybody uh, live. Uh, Africa behind. Actually, Africa is uh, marginalized after uh, post Cold War. They, they, uh, the outsider powers only look at Africa from the po political perspective, from the Cold War mentalities. But uh, when uh, after that, no, uh, China look at that uh, the opportunity. So it's a uh, access the market. There are so many uh, testimony from uh, uh, high-level uh, officials. Let's say, like the uh, uh, one uh, minister uh, in Angola, they they mentioned when they go to the West, they need money to uh, to feed their people. They need an assistance. But uh, what they they, they they got they they are preach they they are uh, they are taught. Uh, Please uh, improve your good governance, improve your human rights, improve your uh, democracy, improve your multi-party uh, uh, system. But the money is not, uh, not came out. But when they go to China, this uh, morning, they ask for the China, China, please uh, assist me to uh, build the, uh, the, the bridge. The early mornings, uh, the following day, all the bridge, all the ports is already there by the China. They didn't, uh, they didn't uh, care about uh, democracy, about human rights, about uh, good governance, and so on and so forth. That's the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the issue. And where is Indonesia should be put? Well, uh, that's the, the, the challenge. Uh, I said, uh, uh, change the paradigm. Uh, I don't want to... Uh, uh, to although I have my own observation, uh, how the way Indonesia, uh, Indonesia look at it, I would like to prefer invite your your comment. And then uh, how to materialize the last one? Of course, I am a big dreamer to uh, to witness uh, Indonesian incorporated uh, to make uh, economic diplomacy works. It's not only the responsibility of the government, not only the responsibility of uh, the Indonesian diplomats, but also the all, not only the business, but also the academicians, the media, and so on and so forth. So if we make a concerted effort, I'm sure we can make, uh, you know, Indonesia and Africa uh, will be in the future will be bright because what because we have economic assets we have economic investment since 1955 and uh, how the way we capitalize our investment our uh, asset our capital I think I will be uh, I will stop here sorry for uh, taking a long time thank you very much uh, Ibu Maharani Habsari thank you I'll be I'll give it back to you Thank you very much, very much enjoying your presentation. It's very comprehensive. Mr. Ambassador Sarifuddin highlighted the very strategic role African countries have in shaping the future of Indonesian trade diplomacy. Um, there are five growth factors associated with urban development in Africa that forge industrialization. And these are also common factors that we share in Indonesia. We also note the structure of trade regionalism provides both opportunities and challenges for Indonesia to align its trade policies. And with a note on the contesting paradigm shifts uh, as recapit uh, recapitulated by uh, Ambassador Saripuddin and the emerging vision of concerted effort, we would like to continue our discussion and invite all participants to give comments and questions. So let me check on the chat board. We already have a question from uh, Mas Muhammad Rashid Rido. We have questions from both speakers uh, to Professor Gufran. 
uh, I'm curious on the data that shows Morocco dominant import from Indonesia is coffee. Why Indonesia coffee bean is popular in Morocco? Do you think Indonesian manufactured instant coffee have potential in Morocco market? And then to Ambassador Saripudin, uh, what Indonesia should do to compete with other developing countries which actively engage in economically with um, sub-Saharan uh, like um, China and India? And related to uh, four economic blocks in Africa, should Indonesia choose which one to engage or is better to catch them all? And one apparently additional question uh, for Ambassador, um, it will be better to uh, for Sokola Indonesia to have its own public promotion um, website um, and other kinds of promotion through the social media. So yes, uh, looking forward to um, response by our distinguished speakers. I will first invite Professor Gufran to give uh, his response. Thank you. Oui, je vais essayer de, de répondre et donc à la question qui m'a été posée et en rapport avec l'importance du produit café en tant que premier produit importé par le Maroc et l'Indonésie. Bien sûr, dans l'identification du potentiel que j'ai mentionné tout à l'heure, Parmi les premiers produits importés par le Maroc dans l'Indonésie, il y a dans l'ordre le café, le thé, le maté et les épices. Et ils ont représenté, par exemple, en 2019, plus que 21 millions de dollars. Et en 2018, c'était environ 20, 23 millions de dollars. Alors, bien sûr, dans, 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 dans l'explication de cette, de cette, euh, de cette euh, domination du café et dans un second, dans deuxième phase, il y a bien sûr une préférence qui renvoie euh, euh, pas seulement au goût euh, du consommateur, mais également à l'existence euh, d'accords euh, euh, dans le cadre de la conférence islamique, euh, parce qu'il ne faut pas oublier que le Maroc, comme, euh, comme dit son membre de l'organisation de, de la conférence islamique, il y a dans ce cadre-là, euh, dans le cadre de cette organisation, et surtout d'un centre spécialisé dépendant de cette organisation, un accord commercial préférentiel qui, 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 euh, qui encourage et qui booste les échanges commerciaux euh, préférentiels entre les pays membres de cette organisation. Donc, euh, je crois que la réponse, premièrement, il y a le goût du consommateur qui est également déterminant, mais il y a également le, 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 le fait euh, qu'il y a... Euh, c'est-à-dire que le Maroc, à partir du moment où il est membre de l'organisation de la conférence islamique et qu'il a passé un certain nombre d'accords commerciaux bilatéraux, il y a une facilitation de commerce entre les deux pays en rapport avec les taux appliqués au niveau des droits de douane, ce qui explique un peu cette domination des importations par le café. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Bufran, for the response. Now we will uh, welcome Ambassador Saripuddin to give a response. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak uh, Muhammad Rashid Rido. What should we uh, as Indonesian do? Of course, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, we have to first and foremost uh, educate the, the Indonesian uh, uh, general peoples uh, by uh, that the uh, African uh, continent is uh, you know uh, very much uh, prospective and uh, they offer many many opportunity 
And then uh, the way I look at it, I'm uh, uh, very much positive. Maybe why uh, they look at uh, the Indonesian business people actually look at Africa is, uh, you know, rather negative than uh, than uh, than positive maybe uh, the uh, the information uh, the opportunity uh, that uh, offered by african is uh, not get through uh, to them so uh, this my uh, my obligation my responsibility to uh, to spread the uh, the information the second of course uh, uh, the uh, uh, as a consequence of that, uh, we try to shift the paradigm the, uh, of uh, business people. Because every time I have a seminar like this, uh, many business people, not only SMEs, they always Africa, where should we go far away? In fact, we have a market here, 270 million. It's a big, in, in Africa, we don't know. We, uh, we are afraid about, uh, we lose something and so on and so forth. So that's uh, the, the, the challenge. Uh, that's the challenge. If you are a really genuine businessman, of course, the more you take uh, uh, the, the higher uh, risk, of course, the the higher benefit that you are going to rip, uh, you are going to uh, to get. So, uh, of course, you are not uh, rent seekers. You are not uh, just uh, uh, fed by uh, the opportunity, but you find the opportunity. Uh, the opportunity. So, uh, the last uh, strategy is make it an, uh, uh, like Indonesian incorporated. There, there, uh, there the component is there is government uh, representative, there is a business people, there is a scholars and uh, and then the media, and then let's join hand in hand, and uh, we listed which uh, uh, market and for what product that is uh, suitable uh, from Indonesia, and uh, that's uh, my uh, my recommendation, and then. Uh, how the way we, we approach Africa? Should we uh, approach all the four uh, regional groupings or uh, only uh, uh, which one is uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, priority? Of course, uh, me as uh, we have actually 16 embassies as Ambassador Al Busra said. There is no single countries in Africa left behind by Indonesia. We have almost every single country's the diplomatic relationships, especially, especially, uh, the exception maybe, I'm not uh, updated yet, uh, but I'm sure maybe uh, only South Sudan, because South Sudan is the new, uh, the new, what's that, uh, the new countries, but uh, I'm so, uh, I'm not, uh, maybe Indonesia also have a uh, diplomatic established uh, with uh, Sudan. Only with Western Sahara, with Saharawi Republic, we didn't, uh, we, uh, we did, uh, still didn't recognize the existence of uh, the Western uh, Sahara. Uh, the issue still under discuss at the UN under the Decolonization uh, Committee, uh, Committee C24 uh, at the UN in New York. So we didn't recognize the Western Sahara. Remember how the way uh, at the uh, uh, in uh, the, the debate uh, in uh, non alignment movement, the when uh, uh, South Africa in Durban the first time recognized and invite uh, Western Sahara and uh, our colleagues from Morocco they uh, they walk out and uh, that's the, the, the history and uh, back to the, 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 the question I suggest of course uh, uh, if you look at uh, from the global perspective from uh, the regional perspective there are only three uh, regions Eastern Africa, Southern Africa and Western Africa look at which uh, country that as, as a hub of course, uh, the, uh, the additional is uh, if you uh, look at uh, the total uh, Addis Ababa, where, where the, uh, the headquarters of uh, EU was there. Indonesia also already as an uh, observer uh, status. Uh, sorry, yeah, Indonesia, I think uh, Pak pa Al Busra will uh, explain a bit. But uh, anyhow, uh, we have a representative there, Pak Al Busra, as a uh, uh, 
Uh, permanent uh, rep uh, to uh, to uh, EU. So uh, depends on uh, if you are business people. Depends on the products uh, of uh, uh, you are going to offer, and also uh, depends on the budget you have. Let's say I would suggest if, uh, uh, for example, in Eastern Africa. You have a Mombasa. It's been that uh, uh, from uh, from a uh, uh, product uh, ship go directly to to Mombasa, uh, and then from Mombasa spread out to all the hinter uh, or the landlocked uh, countries. Of course, it's also additional additional cost. Uh, so I don't have any uh, exact recipe. My recommendations, of course. Uh, as the government, we have to take a, take a approach uh, all at once because every single uh, geograph uh, uh, regional groupings have different characteristics, have uh, their own uh, vision and mission. And Indonesia, as I mentioned, have uh, already has uh, political investment there. In 1955, it's only six, as uh, Ambassador uh, Al Busra said, only six country of African already independent. But now, already fifth, uh, 54. You can imagine 54, and uh, and we have to make use of uh, of them. I think uh, that's uh, my my answer. Thank you very much, uh, Maharani. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador Saripuddin. Perhaps I can invite Ambassador Al Bushra to give a short comment, mm. if any. <laughs> you're still here. Okay, uh, okay. Just, just to reconfirm what the, my colleague Ambassador Excellency Harry said that yes, uh, starting from 2012, Indonesia officially became becoming the an observer. Uh, for the African Union. So that's why I'm here and also the previous ambassador of Indonesia also were here assigned to African Union. Just just to uh, make a reconfirmation about that one. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, my colleague, uh, Harry, and Ibu. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador al -Bushra. And I have checked on the chat box and it seems that we have no more questions left. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end of the session too. Let us share our greatest appreciation to both our speakers, Mr. Ambassador Saripuddin and Professor Gufran, for wonderful presentation and it has definitely widened our perspectives. A warm uh, round of applause for everyone. Uh, Ambassador Al Bushra, thank you very much. And Dr. Jalop Nyembe you. for your sincere contribution to this forum. Thank you to all participants for a good discussion that we had. Hopefully, this webinar will be followed by more intensive discussions uh, to facilitate future Africa-Indonesia trade. I will give the time back to the Master of Ceremony, Mas Aditya. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Marani, to chair this plenary discussion and also all the speakers for the session one and also for the session two. Thank you very much for the presentation. And to close our webinar session this evening, we'd like to invite the director or chairholder of the WTO Chairs Program, Center of World Trade Studies, Universitas Gajah Mada, Dr. Rizanur Arfandi, to deliver a closing remarks, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mas Aditya. I won't take your time much longer because we have been here for more than two and a half hours and we have learned so much from distinguished speakers, Ambassadors Al Busra, Ambassadors Apa Heri, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nyambe, and uh, Monami, my best friend from Morocco, Professor Azadin. Merci beaucoup uh, for your uh, participation in, in this session. And just one very quick comment that uh, this Indo-Africa Center will certainly be continued with uh, follow up some activities. And uh, me and Mbak Rani and uh, also Bu Daula and colleagues at the Center for Wood Trade Study uh, will be part of um, the follow up activities, especially in terms of developing trade um, um, related issues in uh, connecting the two um, uh, continent, the two sides uh, of the continents, Africa and Indonesia. And uh, I must say that um, 
since um, I myself is a chairholder in the WTO chess program and Professor Azedin also a chairholder in Morocco in, in the same uh, uh, program, then I would envision that uh, in the long run or probably in the short term, uh, in, in a year or two, we will uh, follow up uh, um, activities on, on, on that um, uh, based on the program uh, platform, which is um, consisting three pillars, yeah? um, uh, research, uh, curriculum development, and also uh, outreach. And uh, um, I think the uh, attendance of uh, uh, ambassadors of Al-Bus- uh, Abu Sabas Nur and ambassadors of uh, Harry Saribuddin will pretty much contribute to our outreach activities. And uh, in, in the future, um, I really look forward to having colleagues um, uh, from uh, our African partners, um, uh, um, ambassadors or even ministers of trade in Morocco, in Namibia, in uh, Ethiopia to be part of um, our endeavors in this Indo-Africa Center for Sustainable Development. With that, I would like to close um, uh, the seminar and really hope um, to catch you all again uh, in the next uh, um, um, agenda, in the next meeting, uh, hopefully offline, yeah, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> but the team of um, our Indo-Africa Center will visit uh, Namibia in, in February. Uh, probably uh, al or Paheri could arrange um, a meeting either in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa, or in, in uh, Nairobi. In Kenya, yeah. Yes. Uh, hopefully, yes. yeah. In, in February, let's let's yeah. talk about that. And soon, probably in Morocco, yeah. Uh, Professor Azedin, I really hope um, to to visit you uh, personally. Thank you very much, and I'll give the time back to my Inshallah. Student, yeah. Inshallah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mais je voulais Thank dire you. une chose, uh, Monsieur Arifani, si je vous yes. le permettez. Yeah. 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 Oui. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Parce- que j'ai entendu, j'ai pas bien compris mais tout à l'heure euh, l'intervention de Monsieur l'ambassadeur euh, Eri Sarepedin parce que il a évoqué une question politique euh, qui nous intéresse beaucoup au Maroc euh, pour nous euh, c'est relative à la marocainité du Sahara euh, pour nous au Maroc euh, il y a une union sacrée autour de ça et que euh, s'agissant euh, des pays africains, il y a une évolution parce que il y a 24 pays de l'Afrique subsaharienne qui ont ouvert euh, ouvert euh, des, des consulats, euh, des postes consulaires dans les provinces du sud marocain et que le Maroc euh, et que le et, et que le Maroc euh, justement pour éviter euh, les divergences politiques euh, au sein de l'Union africaine. Euh, il a toujours euh, dit que il y a la, la prééminence du Conseil de sécurité et que la dernière euh, le Conseil de sécurité et que la résolution qui a été adoptée dernièrement euh, a montré la voie pour trouver une solution politique. mutuellement acceptable. Donc, euh, je, parce que pour nous, comme pour vous dans le passé, euh, la question de l'intégrité territoriale elle est très importante. Merci. Merci beaucoup, professeur. Thank you very much, uh, professeur Huvron. And uh, here with us, uh, Ambassador Wisnu from uh, Windhoek. Uh, please, time is yours, uh, Ambassador. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Riza. I'd just like to follow up the, uh, your, your last statement that you're going to visit Namibia sometime next year, early next year. Yes. So maybe the next meeting, you can organize in Namibia with the assistant of the embassy. Oh, okay. I'm very happy, I'm very happy okay. to help. Okay. And at the same time, you can inaugurate the Indo-Africa Center in Windu. Yeah, sort of like green launching. Yeah? The, 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 I mean, the rector of the Namibian University and also 
uh, I, in, I would like to invite the rector of the University of Gajah Mada to visit uh, Namibia as well. As my colleague Pa Albushra mentioned, on the way to Namibia, you can stop over <laughs> in, in Addis Ababa for a few days. Yeah, yeah. For coming to Namibia and to organize the next uh, uh, meeting, uh, maybe hybrid, so we can best post and invite more uh, participants in African uh, 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 countries uh, to, to participate in the next uh, 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 event. I think this is a very good event for all participants. Uh, we have very limited, uh, we have a very good resources today, and I, I think it will be best way to officially inaugurate the Indo Indonesia Africa Center initiated by the, the Gajah Mada University and also the Nami University of Namibia. So that will be the right place, the right time, and you are the right person as well. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Wisnu, for very interesting uh, offer yeah, for, for us in uh, Gajah Mada University. And last of all, I would like to thank also po to pa Pascal, our interpreter. Thank you very much, uh, pa Pascal for joining with us and help us with the interpretation. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Pa Pascal. Yeah. 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 I'll give time back to Masaditya. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Riza. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And thank you very much, Professor uh, Azedin. Thank you very much. And this is the end of our webinar this evening. We'd like to thank you for your attention from all participants, for all speakers, and also for all the moderators who have filled out this webinar. And don't forget to fill in the attendance list on the link sent by the committee in the chat box. You can check it on the chat box. Yeah. We see you at the next webinar agenda. Keep your health, everyone. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. 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 Thank you, Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. Ambassador Isu, how are you? Just to greet from Addis Ababa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Selamat sore. Selamat malam. Selamat siang. Selamat malam semuanya. Selamat malam. Thank you. Thank you.